This guy's response to marginalized people criticizing him is to block them. Dude, you're not trans and you just use us. You use us, you use our community because you want to appear more progressive than you actually are. DJ Mule is the type of person to meet up with a right winger in person and then have a fucking meltdown at them, get clipped and get put onto like some right wing TikTok. Like, look at this insane leftoid. That's the type of person DJ Mule is. He will never push back. He will just be condescending and think, oh, you're obviously and objectively wrong and I don't even need to push back because I, I am so much smarter than you and you are so obviously wrong. Everyone can see it, but it's like, no, that's not how the world works, dude. Well, internet, looks like I'm back again doing another one of these videos. I could be making content about how leftists can start organizing, or I could be doing more stuff about unions or, you know, how to get involved with direct action. But of course, the algorithm doesn't like that stuff. It loves stuff like this. Drama, nonsense. And it's all because of a group of guys that monopolize the online left-wing politics space, are increasingly ineffectual, perpetuate harmful behaviors, and haven't actually done that much to change that scene since Gamergate. That's right, gang. We're doing another video about debate bros. This time, we're talking about Xander Hall and how he is not your ally. I feel like that's it's this is like one of those boomer ass troll face memes where it's like I hate internet drama. Le creates one hour twenty nine minute video internet drama. Xanderhal. Most people know him as the cheeky young debate bro regular guy who likes to smonk. And yeah, going along sure. with what you're saying, yeah. not actually. Or from his alt right pipeline video where he congratulates himself on not being a fascist anymore. What a cool and normal thing to be proud. Shut the fuck up! You're literally on a podcast with someone who was in the alt-right. So, okay, when someone who is your friend uh, escapes the alt-right, that's cool and based. And then when someone that you don't like escapes it, no, they should still be a Nazi. I see how it is. You're a punitive piece of shit who doesn't actually believe in anything you're saying. Hold up. Well done for doing the bare minimum, bro. If you're on the left that doesn't really follow the debate scene, you're probably wondering what all the fuss is about. But if you're into the debate scene, you'll probably know him as Wannabe Vosh, as this is what most debate fans have been calling him for the last few years. People call him things like the Zuma version of Vosh, or that he's copying Vosh's style, which is hilarious, to be honest, because Vosh copied Destiny's style, and Destiny copied the modern debate format, and they copied the Greco-Roman debate format. I digress a little bit, but you see what I'm saying here. This is a bit of an obtuse thing to criticize him for. Xanderhal is also seemingly surrounded by a bunch of controversial drama that is more often than not true for every debate bro on the internet. And a lot of it is concerning and makes you wonder at all why people think he's even a based dude. So with all that in mind, why do people actually like him? Now, I know some of you are not going to want to hear this, but we have to address the facts here. And that is that when you scroll through Xander Hall's YouTube page, there is actually a lot of cool leftist stuff on there. See, he's making videos here about how Trump is bad, he's sticking up for trans people a lot, and that's all good. People around his age or even a bit older are probably going to see themselves in him a little bit and maybe even see him as a bit of a role model for getting into politics, especially if... So, okay. I I'm sorry for being a pause, Andy, but there's something I want to explain about, like, what precipitated a lot of this. Like, I'm friends with Vosh. Ian has been... A really good guy to me he was there to help me through like all of the kiwi farm shit that happened to me um i really respect him i like his content i don't always agree with his political takes but i don't think that i have to because of my friendship with vosh they decided that i am now like uh, being groomed by vosh into being exactly a carbon copy of him um that's not how I see myself. My content is radically different. And I told people, I don't want to pick sides. I want to be in my own space. I don't see myself as really fitting into like any specific space on the internet. And I told them, if you make me take a side between you and Vosh, I will take Vosh's side. Because I'm not, he's not, He's not making me take a side between people. I'm my own person. They're already kind of skewed to the left. He's got a good stream personality, he interacts with chat a lot, and he's generally entertaining in an above average way. He's gained a big following since making content like this, and yes, I know you are gonna get more views and subscribers based on bigger content creators that you associate with. I know that from my own experience, however, you can't deny that Xanderhal, well, he knows how to content create. He is an influencer who has a brand and whatnot. 
However, you'd be right in thinking that amongst these thumbnails, something just doesn't feel quite right. The more and more you scroll, the more and more you start to see things like this. Uh, yeah, like, Twitter discourse can be a bit myopic and wrong, but why are you focusing on this? Okay, that one's a little bit extra. I don't know what that's all about. Uh, oh, okay, he's just made a video in bad faith about one of my friends. Oh, and there's another one. Okay, it's just, just like, obsessed with drama and... Okay, this is fucked up. What is this guy's... I love how they're pretending that them doing countless videos on Caleb Maupin and uh, the patriotic socialist crowd isn't drama content. Like, it's not a serious political project that you're doing. You're making monetized internet content where the main objective is laughing at clowns. Basically, the content that I'm doing right now, I'm here to laugh at clowns. Purpose on this platform. Is he a leftist? Or is he just a leftist some of the time and a piece of shit whenever it suits him? Xanahol prides himself on debating people who disagree with him on anything in the marketplace of ideas. And he doesn't limit the people he platforms in order to protect his user base. Oh no, he loves debating fascists, especially about the human rights of the people that he claims to support. But why? If he's a leftist, surely he knows that platforming people with strict ideologies becomes more of a battle to convert the opposing person's audience, but actually you've achieved nothing because the supporters of your point of view stay the same and the supporters of your opponents stay the same. But the new impressionable viewers that haven't been exposed to either ideology have now been exposed to a violent ideology that will influence them easier and easier depending on their material conditions and prior exposure to fascist ideology in our culture and media that permeates every single aspect. Hey everyone, it's Mule here. What Mule has forgotten is that there are probably a lot of people watching this video who don't understand why the platforming of bad ideas is bad. Debate bros have been taking up space in the online left for some time now, and a lot of their content focuses on debating fascists or conservatives on whether trans people should exist or whether there is act- I'm so sick of this. Like, I used to be a tender queer like this, you know? I used to legitimately believe that you should never, under any circumstance, platform bad ideas. I believe that. I did. And then, I realized something. If there's absolutely no pushback, you're conceding that space. You're putting yourself in an echo chamber, and the people that follow those beliefs will never hear you out. Whereas, you actually bring those people onto your stream. You talk to them. They're bringing their audiences, a lot of young, impressionable people, and you have a chance to get through to them. And it might, it might take, you know, some of them might instantly come over. Some of them might take days, some of them might take weeks, some of them might take months, some of them might take years. But the thing is, you got to listen, you got them to listen. Actually, a white genocide happening. Their entire modus operandi seems to be that we need to convert people who think differently to us. They're obsessed with this idea, even though it was proven wrong a hundred years ago by Vladimir Ilyich Lenin, who said this. Why should we bother to reply to Kautsky? He would reply to us, and we would have to reply to his reply. There's oh, this is great. The Sockton on left week. You know why? You know that why should we bother to reply to Kotsky quote by Lenin? It's fake. It was fabricated by a conservative pundit who wanted to pretend that Lenin hated debate. And, and here's something specifically that pisses me off. A lot of longtime viewers know I was very much involved in a communist party. I'm not anymore. I'm not a Marxist Leninist, but for several years of my life, I was. I ran for parliament with a Marxist Leninist party. I met people who were from FARC. I met people from like the Communist Party, the Russian Federation of Greece, of like all over the fucking world. And through that, I have come to have an entirely different type of disdain for LARPers like this, who have no connection to this, who never read anything, who never actually left their fucking houses. But they have this condescending, shit-eating attitude about it. Lenin was a fucking debate bro. Lenin would be on Twitch fucking yelling at people every fucking day. No end to that. It will be quite enough for us to announce that Kautsky is a traitor to the working class and everyone will understand everything. And of course, multiple real instances of people that these nerds have debated who have remained steadfast in their fascist opinions. So there you have it. Now you're briefed on the debate person, the type of leftist who simply thrives on drama and doesn't give one iota of shits as to whether people are actually doing on the ground organizing, activism, or doing anything progressive at all. They love leftism as an aesthetic, as it were. Anyway, back to Mule. Oh my God. Thanks, Mule. So the question remains, does Xanderhal know that platforming fascists goes against everything that leftists stand for? How many fascists has he de-radicalized? Something that's important to point out is that the de-radicalization of fascists is a very real discussion that- Oh no. Oh no, guys. Oh no, guys. When I ran for fucking parliament 
and I had to do an actual parliamentary candidate debate with someone from the fascist party. I platform fascist. Oh no. Oh fucking no. Oh shit. Leftists are going to have to have at some point as Nazi views and ideology have the possibility to outlast the potential revolution or global shift towards more radically left-wing politics. What I do know of this kind of action that exists so far is that it's undertaken mainly by charities like Hope Not Hate, who tend to infiltrate telegram groups of fascists like the BNP or the EDL in the UK, who create disorder and sow dissent amongst the rank and file fashion the movements who are losing faith in them due to the fact that they're not really addressing their material conditions and seem to be focused on something that is more of a losing battle. What is certainly not effective is nerds on the internet debating them, especially when those nerds every now and then let their mask slip a little bit and repeat the same fascist talking points they've been arguing against. No, as you can see here, the debate Lord Xanderhal tends to actually just focus on drama, which is annoying because you can see from some of his other videos, he's right about some stuff, which is good. But then why does he focus on myopic things like people on Twitter not agreeing with him? Why does he use words like woke school and cry bully? What do those words even mean? Another thing to be aware of when looking okay, at debate bros is their takes. Sometimes their takes are so bizarre that they make no sense. Is he, is he literally like, yeah, this, we're watching a drama video right now. This is drama content. He made a drama video. It looks like he actually studied how drama content creators on YouTube make drama content before. Him saying like, oh, what does woke scold mean? What does tender queer mean? It's like, okay, if you are being willfully ignorant, you won't actually learn the terminology that people are using. You're going to end up in an echo chamber. You're not going to be on the left whatsoever. For example, this video where Xanderhal clickbaits you into all hell with the title, My Controversial Take on Platforming Joe Rogan. His hot take is that Joe Rogan is an irresponsible platformer, but shouldn't lose his platform because he's a good interviewer. Now, for a start, Joe Rogan is not a good interviewer. He's a stoner that sits there and goes, Hey, you ever seen a chimp pilot a jet on DMT? And if he's irresponsible at platforming people, why then should he keep his platform? I think one of the funniest and most telling things about this video in particular is that Xanderhal is sat there in a Shadow the Hedgehog onesie. You know, Shadow the Hedgehog, the ambivalent, cool, and edgy character from the Sonic the Hedgehog. What does that have to do? series that doesn't really care about good or evil he's too cool for that shit whilst xanderhal is sat there being ambivalent and edgy and not really caring about good or evil because he's too cool for that shit so anyway why has he said this what's the point joe rogan had this like one like actual like scientist or like an actual physicist or something on his show like this is a smart guy that's being interviewed here that i wish i could talk to because i have a million questions i would ask this guy if i could just talk to him directly but joe rogan literally asked every question i would have asked and by the end of that episode of his podcast i don't think there was there would be any questions i'd have left to ask that guy bro you're a 23 year old edgelord that got famous too quick you're not a good interviewer either he goes on to say that rogan's interview with daryl a davis the black blues and r&b musician who converted kkk members and de-radicalized them was really good and he was immersed in listening to the story but that's nothing to do with joe rogan you can go and listen to daryl a davis's story from multiple other sources we don't need a brain force chugging steroid smacking moron to show us this you know also i am an ex-fan of the joe rogan experience and in all the episodes that i watched and i did watch a lot of joe rogan most of the time joe just kind of sits there and goes huh wow huh yeah Whoa. If Joe Rogan's a good interviewer, I'm literally the most best video essayist of all time on the internet. And I know I'm not. So Xander Hall, after blathering on for two minutes, not really saying anything of value, decides that if the left banned Joe Rogan from Spotify, that that would be political suicide. Now, what does he mean by that? Well, I'll tell you what he means. These debate nerds are always talking about optics. They're always saying that lefties are too much for the average voter. And that's why they focus on myopic issues that like maybe five people have spoken about on Twitter.com. You know, after they've had babies first political take and they aren't actually big talking points in the broader left. You see, what they're trying to do is shame lefties into being more palatable to the center left powers in electoral politics. Not once have these nerds considered that most lefties have abandoned electoral politics. Yeah, this is a really critical misunderstanding of what makes a good interview. But also just his idea of what makes someone a good leftist is really fucking stupid. Like if you're not appealing to the mass of people that you, oh my, it's like if you're not appealing to fucking people, it does not matter how awesome your ideas are. If your ideas, if you cannot put your theory into practice, your theory's fucking worthless. It doesn't matter. It does not matter how much you read or how good your ideas are if they can never be put, like if they can't make it into the real world, it's fucking useless. It was fucking Karl Marx who said, philosophers have hitherto only interpreted the world. The point, however, is to change it. It's not to talk about it. It's not to make videos about it. It's not to be a fucking 
goofy piece of shit who thinks they're better than everyone about it. It's to actually make the world a better place. Politics in favor of direct action and organizing. Because, you know, we're smart. But it always comes back to this optics shit. Like, we should care about what conservatives and fascists think about us. If it's the left's fault that Joe Rogan gets taken off Spotify and Nazis are frothing at the mouth, why should I care? I would simply have a celebratory wank. But no, the reason that they talk about optics all the time is because they think that you can win fascists over to our side with good optics. You're starting to see how this is all a circle gang? Debate Nazis, have good optics, destroy all the lefties who have bad optics. So let's get into that last part. He's doing literally everything that he's criticizing other people for. He needs to put a mirror up to his face. In this video, Xander Hall talks about his editor, Cherry Bread TV, who did a tweet about a bunch of online slang used by queer people, specifically trans people. He then goes on to say that the cancellation that they received for this was outrageous and people lost their minds over it, which he then uses to catapult himself into a rant about how all LGBTQIA plus people online, specifically those that criticize Vosh and other debate bros, are mentally ill and abuse victims and for some reason need online internet points to feel good about themselves. It's extremely fucked up and just more evidence that whenever him and any of his debate bro friends use the term woke scold, what they actually mean is person that is holding me to account. Guess this is my uh, big woke scold moment, eh? Zanny boy. So huge thing to point out here, claiming that all LGBTQIA plus people are victims of abuse is a huge right wing conservative talking point. And it's actually the basis for conversion therapy. Conversion therapists tend to point out people's abuse. As the vast majority of LGBT people are victims of abuse. That's true. Like, that's just objectively true if you look at any stats on the topic. It, reason... wait, okay, it wasn't even the argument Zan was making, but it's just fucking weird. It's really weird to just pretend that that's not true. For them being queer. Not enough attention from daddy? Well, you became gay to get attention from other men. Not enough attention Zan from mom? Well, you became argument. gay to fill the feminine shaped hole in your life. Not all queer people are victims of abuse, and not all victims of abuse are queer. It's a huge false cause fallacy. You know, correlation is not causation. There's a lot more extremely telling points in this video, so I'm just going to list all of them off real quick. Ahem. Xanahal says at the start of this video that his editor is a quote-unquote bit of a memer, and then immediately talks about how the meme they posted is how, quote, the trans community online is toxic and gatekeepy, which is all in all true for most communities online. It's just interesting how painting this as exclusively a trans problem is his main aim here. It's transphobic. If you're wondering what the problem with that is, it's that it's transphobic. Is that a said Is he gonna elaborate on how it's transphobic? Because by the way, these these people, like as you saw with DJ Mule, they don't give a fuck about trans people. If a trans person pushes back against him treating all trans people like they're fucking children, he will just block them and be like, I thought better of you. Said to him apparently, I might get cancelled for this. And his response is basically, who cares, Lamau? In their post regarding their apparent cancellation, his editor references Vosh's post that he used as an explanation of using the tactical N-word. And for those of you who are blessed enough to not know what this is, this is a situation where Vosh, in a debate with a fascist, just said the N-word with the hard R, literally just as a tactic to get shock and loads of views and controversy. Yep, and this is something that Xanderhal classifies as a good meme. He also references Vosh's rant about queer people online, which was extremely queerphobic, again, because of what I mentioned previously about attaching toxic online behaviors to one marginalized demographic. It's super annoying because, yes, some people are toxic online, but just log off. You don't have to see those people. This isn't a huge thing to worry about for most people, but you see, the people that Xander Hall's actually talking about here are just people that disagree with him, and he can't have that. Oh, no, God forbid. He starts to say that the way to solve this problem is to make sure that there are less transphobic and queerphobic parents out there, kind of trying to reinforce the fact that his de-radicalization is the solution to a lot of problems. Not that, you know, he should reflect on some of the more problematic aspects of his behavior that these so-called woke scolds point out. Now, I'd be lying if I said that people didn't go too far online. Absolutely they do. I've seen hundreds and thousands of baby's first political opinion and people who really go ham and puritanical on issues that aren't really that much of an issue once you put them under a close the, the oh my god i wish that he would just be sincere because he's talking about at the start of the video he's like i would rather be doing activism i'd rather be doing direct action right now it's like okay bro nothing is stopping you from going out and doing those things. You can log off. You can just log off and let YouTube content creators make content. That's li that's literally just what he cut, you know, he like fucking like marches into the space and then is expecting it to be something that it fundamentally is not while talking about how much he would rather not be in the space. It's like, okay, log the fuck off, leave your computer.
he's literally like taking time away from all of the activism and direct action that he says he wants to do in order to make hour-long drama videos about people he doesn't like. Analysis. But if I thought that people doing that was a problem, I'd be doing a video about them and not debate bros. It's good that people are exploring the boundaries of our language and how the roots of certain words can be harming people and how certain attitudes and behaviors need to be changed. It shows that our culture is evolving into one that's based on love and compassion rather than hateful exclusion. And it can also show that we have a long way to go when it comes to people resorting to puritanical, Protestant, colonialist rhetoric when trying to change people's minds about things. But that's all by the by. There's one thing that's extra telling in this video. He says that woke schools need to be de radicalized in the same way that Nazis do. So what does that tell us about Zanderhof? So if you're a Zan fan and you've made it this far in the video, I gotta say kudos because most debate bro fans don't really watch the video and simply react to things out of context and then claim that I'm doing the same thing. Is, was he really trying to bait people? Like there have been like at least a million views out of people reacting and dragging him for this video. Thing, despite the hours and hours and hours of content that I've watched from your special boy. And some of you are sat there saying, well, no, Zanderhal is not a lib. He's not a centrist. What do you mean? He's progressive. He's a leftist. All right, all right, all right, all right. Calm down. We're going to get into it. Just grab a nice drink, some snackies, maybe play your favorite Vibby game while you're watching this video, and we're going to get into it. Scrolling through Zanderhal's YouTube page, you'll notice that there isn't a lot about his actual views when it comes to material. I want to call the police after he talked to me like that conditions or class consciousness. A lot of his left-wing content is based on civil and human rights, which he kind of shits all over when he does his woke school content. So let's go right back to his first video that got a ton of views, how I almost became alt-right. He starts off by saying he never really went into politics and had a fairly progressive mom who taught him why it's wrong to be racist, misogynist, and bigoted in general, and that he was super disappointed in the USA and Americans in general when Trump got elected because even he could see that Trump was a bad guy. He then talks about his radicalization through YouTube content. It's so weird listening to this because it's almost like he's talking about himself when he talks about Chris Reagan, who he describes introduced him to alt-right content. He says that Chris described himself as center-left and did a lot of content about how feminism was obsolete in the USA in 2016. Obviously, Zanderhal doesn't do content like that, but he does do content that attacks people that are too left-wing for him or annoy him personally. A lot of similarities, you know? The video is very short, so I would encourage you to watch it yourself, but the long and short of it is that he went further down the pipeline and saw Charlottesville and the murder of Heather Heyer, and then he saw that that shit was actually really bad and wrong, so he started to lose faith in it. He then talks about how destiny pulled him out of the alt-right pipeline. For those of you that are somehow blissfully unaware of density, here is a quick recap. He started making content on Twitch when it was still Justin.tv. He did like StarCraft 2 matches and he started doing debate content around 2016. Destiny apparently referred to himself as a libertarian before this, but then called himself a liberal when he heard another streamer call another streamer the F word. Anyway, in Destiny's debate content, he did a lot of arguing against white supremacists and alt-right figureheads. But now here's the key thing about this. He kind of always did this from the center ground. Destiny has also admitted to using slurs in private and has defended this, in fact, in multiple debates. He's never been a communist or a socialist or an anarchist and has in fact argued against those ideologies from a capitalist viewpoint for a long, long time. In fact, Destiny is quoted as saying this about the George Floyd uprisings. The rioting needs to fucking stop. And if that means like white redneck fucking militia dudes out there mowing down dipshit protesters that think that they could torch buildings at 10 p.m., then at this point they have my fucking blessing because holy shit, this fucking shit needs to stop. It needed to stop a long time ago. So yeah, this is the guy that saved Zanderhal. Neoliberal politics are inherently like this. They say, yes, you can have your rights as long as you shut the fuck up about your queerness, shut the fuck up about your blackness, and do your job until you die in poverty like the wage slave that you are. Do not question the machine. You are part of the machine. What's hilarious about this, and the reason that I'm bringing this up, is because oh this is exactly God. where Zanderhal sits nowadays. Albeit slightly to the left of Destiny, he does argue in support of trans rights and Black Lives Matter. In a follow-up to this video in the much longer How I Fell Down the Alt-Right Pipeline and Escapes, he immediately starts by saying, I also wasn't even a leftist when I made those videos. I was still identifying as what I now know to be a neoliberal. And then claims to become more progressive, but only really says that- Why is that a problem? Why would you fucking punish someone for leaving the alt-right? he's a leftist and doesn't really go on much from there. He does say that apparently he was planning to read The Conquest of Bread live on stream, but I can't find that on his channel anywhere. So it's likely that he read a bit of it, thought it was going to be too boring and sacked the idea off, which is actually fair enough because I think that reading theory on a live stream is extremely boring content and I definitely would not be down for that. But it does kind of show that he's not really interested in that stuff and the vast majority of his other content clearly shows a lack of understanding about how the working class struggle intersects with the civil rights that he supports. What's also interesting to point out is that while Zanderhal says that Destiny saved him from the alt-right pipeline, Zanderhal doesn't appear to have actually ever been debated on his alt-right views. 
He simply saw an example of right-wing views being torn to shreds in the form of Destiny debating a white supremacist. The major difference between this and other forms of de-radicalization is that it simply made him not a Nazi. It didn't make him a communist, an anarchist, or even a socialist. The more and more that Zandhol gushes about Destiny, it becomes clearer and clearer that he has a deep love for the guy, and that he wants to emulate him in every way. He says that the edginess of Destiny made him think he was cool, and he made a lot of friends in Destiny's Discord server. Now, the next part is extremely interesting. He talks about our schoolboy Sean's video, The Fate of the Frogmen, a video in which Sean talks about the online alt-right and their slow, sad march into irrelevance. And Zan the man says that this was the moment that he truly understood what had happened to him. Basically admitting that Sean, a video essayist, made him really understand what had happened to him versus watching the debate with Destiny, which simply made him stop being a full-on Sieg Heiling Nazi. It's interesting that he talks about learning social structures and disavowing capitalism, but a lot of his content just really isn't about that. One of the most important things to happen over the last year for a lot of leftists is the wave of unionization that's happened across the US and the world. If Xander Hall was covering a lot of this, that'd mean a lot of people learning about a lot of good stuff. He's got one video that's 18 minutes of him covering the Staten Island warehouse unionization, but it's got woefully low views. Hell, I know the feels on that one. My union video and activism content performs terribly. But let's talk about his Joe Biden support. It's so interesting that in this video, quote, why I'm not Bernie or bust and you shouldn't be either, Xander Holt talks about how he loves Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden is a creepy old man who has rape allegations against him. But more recently, he just unironically tweets and retweets Joe Biden's Twitter or pro-Democrat stuff. Xander in this video also talks about Ruth Bader Ginsburg and how if she dies while Trump is in office, then women's rights, trans rights, and other civil rights are all on the chopping block. Funny then how all that still kind of happened, but he still supports Joe Biden and the Democrats. He focuses in this video a lot about harm reduction, but the harm has been done. It happened under Joe Biden and the Democrats. And Xander Hall used his platform to tell people that Bernie or bust is a bad thing. Okay, I get it. Not voting for a Democrat in 2020 would have been a disaster. But you didn't need to go full pro-Democrat either. New one. What? So he just concedes, yes, it was the right thing for Zan to do, to vote for the Democrats. However, it was really cringe of you to say that you were voting for the Democrats. Once is a thing and critical support is a thing. The main thing to take away from Xander Holt in this video is this. Revolution isn't happening in the foreseeable future. All we can do at this current moment- That's literally true. That's literally what any fucking socialist or communist organization in the real world in the fucking West says. You fucking liberal. You fucking LARPer piece of shit. Jesus. We work within our current electoral system. Anybody who's still Bernie or Bust at this point, there's no changing their minds. Fuck them, okay? They don't give a shit about minorities or anybody uh, in this country um, uh, whose life is on the line in this election. This is such a reductive take, and again, has been proven wrong by the fact that said minorities have suffered under Biden, as we previously discussed. So the question here is this. If Xander Hall loves Bernie so much, why is he so willing to claim that the majority of people who support Bernie don't care about marginalized people's rights? So my theory is this. As we said before, when Xander Hall said he lost a lot of faith in America after Trump was elected, he sees that as the catalyst for him going down the pipeline. So for him, beating Trump is paramount in that election because he sees his radicalization as Trump's fault. Which is true, as far as we can tell, Steve Bannon, who I've talked about on the channel before, was a bigwig on Trump's campaign and literally wanted to radicalize gamers to the far right. However, what seems to be more important to Zan than the nuance that Bernie or Busters have a point, or that even Bernie or Busters do care about marginalized people, is that Trump gets beat in the election. To Xander Hall, this is a cathartic thing that he needs, and to be fair, it actually was for a lot of Americans and people around the world. Especially people in a similar position to Xander Hall who got radicalized by alt-right beliefs and then realized that they've been taken for a ride. It's kind of like revenge for them, if you will. See now, what happens with revenge is that you become a bit blinkered and you lose sight of the bigger picture. Neoliberals are actually- Look, I would roast him for being bald, but anyone here who's unaware, I've already been canceled by trans Twitter for calling Tim Pool bald. So, um, I realized that bald jokes are the worst things you can ever make. It's like, it's really up there, you know? Now- no, you can do it. I fucking, that was so fucking dumb. Primed for this kind of worldview. You know, it's the I'm all right, Jack mentality. Uh, also a bit of a sidetrack, but I just want to point out in this video, he says this. Nuking Japan was justified though. It's sort of like a, a- You don't think his baldness looks bad? He looks like fucking Dr. Robotnik. What are you talking about? Our discussion, but yeah. Um, from what I've seen with all the arguments, it does seem like it, like, the, the good does outweigh the bad, and a really, it's like the train, it's like the, the trolley problem, you know? It's a really fucked up situation, but we're not gonna talk about that right now. What? Xander Hall then goes on to talk about all the bad things that are gonna happen if Trump gets re-elected. <clears throat> Such as... The US will slip further into fascism. Roe v. Wade will get overturned. The attacks on LGBTQIA plus people will increase and continue. He also focuses on COVID-19, saying that it will continue to ravage the US unchecked. Let's uh, take a look at what happened under Biden. Um, the US has slipped further into fascism. Roe v. Wade has been overturned. Attacks on LGBTQIA plus people have increased and continued. COVID-19 is still ravaging the US. On oh my god. I am recommitting that I am bigoted against the British. I... Unchecked. 
What's really interesting about Xander Hall and his ilk is that they are obsessed with electoral politics and seem to see it as the be-all and end-all despite identifying themselves as leftists and in some cases, anarchists. From a more critical point of view in which you can easily observe and analyze electoral politics to be milk toast in achieving anything good at best, we understand that the most important thing to do, especially nowadays, is to organize, create instances of direct action and mutual aid in order to remove dependence on the state, build dual power, and eventually sever all ties with those who claim to govern us. This is the way. While Zan did indeed cover the unionization of the Amazon warehouse in Staten Island, this seems to be the only bit of his content that covers any kind of dual power structures at all. And to be honest, I think this is why Xander Hall and his community have such a hard time listening to marginalized people who criticize him, because his content is focused on working within the system. Okay, this guy's response to marginalized people criticizing him is to block them. I don't know why he wants to continuously use trannies as a fucking shield. Dude, you're not trans and you just fucking use us. You use us, you use our community because you want to appear more progressive than you actually are. Trying to change said system from within. Kind of like a guy who joins the police force to try and make it better. And just like said cop, you either end up getting bullied out of the force or becoming the thing that you hate. <laughs> So, I want to preface this segment with this. I'm going to be talking about one of my best friends, Sophie from Mars. She is one of my favorite people. She's one of my co-hosts on Red Planet. She makes me laugh. She has helped me build my channel to what it is today. She reinvigorated my love of all things based, and her eloquent commentary on the state of the world and what needs to be done today in order to improve the lives of people has inspired me to do the activism that I am involved with today. So in short, I'm biased. However, I'm well aware that bad faith actors won't care either way. Hello everyone, meet my token trans friend. And now I'm going to tell you how woke I am. So, of course, I'm going to be biased as fuck in defending my friends. Fuck you. It's rad and cool and good, actually, to be biased and defend your friends. Also, I think the main thing to point out, in case you didn't figure it out already, is that I'm extremely biased against debate bros anyway. So, if your main criticism of this video is that I'm biased, then, well, duh. It's actually cool to be biased against things that are bad. Also, it's one letter away from beast. Xander Hall made a video earlier this year in May. It's called Lefty YouTuber Sophie from Mars is a Lying Joke. Now, I don't know why I didn't put any spaces in Sophie's name there. Uh, just a bit weird, but let's move on. Now, the first thing I want to draw your attention to is how many views this video got. It's over 30,000, and his videos where he talks about unions is at a measly 4K. And I want you to remember this before we get into to this segment, every piece of content that Xander Hall makes where he is attacking a marginalized person, be it a woman, a trans person, a black person, gets so many more views than any of his other content. His followers fucking love drama. Now, this video sucks for many reasons, but let's just have a look oh, at the oh, comments. Oh, before... oh, oh, let me, uh, let me just take a quick look about this. Uh, DJ Mule's channel. Let's Debate see. bros are... Let's see, what, what are his most popular videos his most popular videos are xander hall is not your ally vosh is not your ally why kink belongs at pride uh doomerism is cringe and here's why why dave rubin and pick me gay it's all drama content all of his best content is drama content because that's what his audience We're eats up. shut the fuck up a black person gets so many more views than any of his other content his followers fucking love drama now, this video sucks for many reasons, but let's just have a look at the comments before we watch the video. And there's a reason that I'm doing this, and I'll tell you in a bit. Jesus fucking Christ, the aggression in her tweet. I don't see how people cannot see through such relentless, extreme language. It's a red flag, and I think there's a word for it, but I can't think of it. Oh well. She couldn't just casually hate Bosch. It needs to be a great danger for everyone. Literally worst person ever. Which is wild, coming from someone who made video on Proud Boys. Okay, this one's funny as fuck to begin with, implying that there is aggression in a tweet. The reply is also extra funny because it's like, oh, you know, she's calling out someone who made video on Proud Boys. We don't even know the context of the video. It could be a video like saying that the Proud Boys are good. <laughs> it feels a bit disheartening to think of what little chance people give you. But please remember that they're so important and significant that they already have an opinion on you while at the same time, they're not even known really outside their circle. Okay, this is super cringe. Calling Xander Hall important and significant and then to imply that Sophie's a nobody. Can you not understand numbers? Like, can you not see the difference here? I genuinely don't understand some of this stuff. I imagine Sophie's motivated reasoning is plain to see for most people who are being even slightly critical. So these angry Twitter rants aren't going to be particularly convincing for most. The audience for these tweets has to just be other people who hate Vosh, Zadahal, etc., which is bizarre. This cottage industry seems organic, because I think most of its contributors seem genuine, but it's functionally the same kind of astroturf entity which artificially gets created in other political online spaces all the time, so I wouldn't rule it out. There can't be much money in the anti orbit industrial complex, so I just can't see why anyone participated in it for business reasons, but they do seem determined to make an anti-Vosh Zandi 
new meta. I don't think it has much chance of success, though. Oh, boy, where to start with that one? Um, but I'm not really here to debate these comments. I'm just kind of here to show what kind of a picture is being painted about my friend. So let's move on. A lot of SAS just seem to viscerally hate streamers as a group at a level that strikes me as bizarre and unwarranted. What's the dealio? Okay, um, does this motherfucker know that there are more streamers than Xanderhol and Vosh? Sophie's, as I said, one of my best friends, and I've been a political streamer for most of my content creation career. There are also plenty of other leftist Twitch streamers who do not do debate content. Like, what are you talking about? I think it's honestly the it's uh, it's honestly so maddening because like I was in that crowd when I started streaming I was like I hate debate perverts I hate debate I hate debate and now I'm realizing that the crowd that says I hate debate they're either liars or they're um idiots that's it like Hassan's like I hate debate perverts he was very willing to debate Andrew Tate because obviously clout he's not going to turn down that option at the same time, like a lot of the other leftists who were like, I hate debates, just want to create an echo chamber and they don't want to push back against harmful things um, or expose their ideas, if their ideas are good, to the audience of the person who is leading um, young manipulative people down this pipeline. Twitter anti gaff culture, you get a lot of engagement for, um, actually, comments, and less talented video essayists thrive off that shit. Meanwhile, Twitch is a live format, and every streamer that does it long enough is gonna say some shit that either sounds weird out of context, was wrong but poorly thought out, usually refined later, or just misspoken so they're an easy target. This is another huge assumption here. As I said, I've been streaming for a long time, six years in fact, and no one has out of contexted any of my content, and I know I'm gonna have got some stuff slightly wrong in that time. You ever wonder why? it's like always the debate bros that get this kind of stuff it's always the debate bros who are clipped out of context or oh they just misspoke it's a live stream format everybody's gonna get some stuff wrong eventually so from all these comments we're getting something we're getting a picture of our sophie they're building a profile of someone who their debate king does not like and so it makes it easier for them to not like her either there are also multiple comments saying i used to follow sophie now i just can't so what could it have been that sophie did that was so reprehensible in the eyes of these people what did she say and yeah, like dj mule is the type of person to meet up with a right winger in person and then have a fucking meltdown at them get clipped and get put onto like some right wing tiktok like look at this insane leftoid that's the type of person dj mule is he will never push back he will just be condescending and think oh you're obviously and objectively wrong and i don't even need to push back because I, I am so much smarter than you and you are so obviously wrong. Everyone can see it, but it's like, no, that's not how the world fucking works, dude. Why did she say it? From these comments, it really sounds like she's a hypersensitive, overbearing, terminally online monster. So what is it? What happened? Jerry Pred is quote tweeting Sophie in bad faith here about something that actually happened. Now, I have to bring this up because this is something that's mentioned in this tweet. So the sex cult stuff. I was actually going to include the sex cult drama in this video, but the main victim who spoke out against this has categorically said that she does not want people making content about what happened to her anymore. And so in situations like this, it's incredibly important to center the victim's voice. So I will not be talking about this stuff. However, with all that in mind and my oh actual God. knowledge of what happened, it is a extremely relevant thing for people to bring up about Xanderhal. So apparently just for oh, believing it's a relevant thing for people to bring up. Remember, remember earlier in the stream when I confronted him, hey, I got dragged for bringing up your evidence about Chud Logic being a pedophile. And he said, well, you shouldn't have talked about it. He doesn't actually want people to do things with his information. He just wants attention. He literally blamed me for getting dogpiled online because of the information he put out there. Sims. Sophie here is being labeled as a bad faith actor who is spreading lies about the community. Really interesting here that this is about What the Trans, a trans community support network that does a lot of exposés on gender criticals and TERFs. The tweet in question here is when What the Trans asked trans people who support Vosh why they support him when he's been so transphobic in the past. It didn't make sense. What the Trans then talks about is how it was absolutely Vosh fans that Dogpile reported this tweet to get the account suspended. As I said, this is an account that helps trans people a lot. What the trans even mentions that gender criticals and TERFs normally don't bother mass reporting trans activist accounts. They tend to focus on popular cis I'm allies sorry. or popular trans people themselves. I want to draw your attention back to this comment on the video. The aggressive tone being described here is not something that you can take from words on the screen that is Sophie's tweet. However, Xanderhal seems to be trying out for an Oscar here. His fans are belligerent, obnoxious, creepy chuds who harass and shame other content creators for expressing any disagreement with him in ways no other's community, no other creator's community ever does, ever does. So when Zan first stops reading the tweets in this hilariously villainous way, he says that, by the way, nothing here makes sense. 
He's clearly trying to paint her as having a breakdown and being unintelligible. This is something that we see debate bros do a lot, especially when they're attacking trans people who criticize them, trans women specifically. And this is to paint the idea that they're pushing too far in their politics and they spend too much time online and don't really have much interaction in the outside real world. This couldn't be further from the truth and not just in most of the trans women that debate bros send for online, but Sophie in particular. She has literally two videos here of her going and speaking at trans rights protests. This is more activism than I've seen from literally any fucking debate, bro. So talking about bad faith. Bosch organized an entire canvassing thing. They're lumping me in with the debate crowd. I raised like a quarter of a million dollars for trans charities. I've spoken at public events. I've ran a youth group for trans kids before. Like I've done a lot of shit in the real world. This is bad faith in its entirety. While Xanahol is talking about this, his chat further adds to the narrative that Sophie is a monster, calling oh her a God. psycho amongst all the bad faith arguments. Who is this Sophie? It's not the Sophie I know. The one that I've spent literal days with who loves and cares about her friends. She loves and cares about her comrades so much and is desperate to get people to change the horrific world that we live in. I certainly wouldn't call her a psycho. Wait, Just wait, wait. Okay, these are, these are replies from Vosh's fans to the white, what the trans tweet. They're invalidating all these trans testimonials. Let me see. Trans people don't make me, please don't make me regret this. Uh, trans people only who like Vosh, what has he done for you? Not asking to imply anything, I would like to know. I'm not going to reply with anything, I honestly don't get it, help. So these are all like the replies that were good. A lot of replies, holy shit. Literally like hundreds of people here, I'm trans, here's the reason I like Vosh. That's insane, it just keeps going. All right, I'm going back to the video. I love to comment on that one too. And they deleted the tweet after when they realized they weren't going to get the kind of support that they wanted. Look at how easily his audience eats this shit up. And remember, this is an audience that has a huge overlap with Destiny and Vosh. And so this is the main point in the video where I want to show that Xanderhal really doesn't understand the meaning of the word ally. An ally is not someone who uses marginalized people in their community to win arguments or support their biases. It's really funny because in my video that I did on Vosh, I had so many people in my comments telling me that it's good and correct to criticize Blair White and Candace Owens. And no, for a start, if you're cis and white, it isn't your place to focus on those people. It isn't your place to tell trans people and black people who best represent their community. Of course, those individuals mentioned are wrong about a lot of stuff. And it is an ally's duty to understand that marginalized groups are not monoliths and that these people don't represent the communities as a whole. No, if you focus on that stuff instead of amplifying and signal oh boosting God. and supporting other creators who do that work, you are certainly not an ally. It is absolutely not for cis people He's to so say that a certain trans woman who disagrees with you is unhinged and bad and then use the example of impressionable people who are already predisposed to support you in your community in order to say that they are wrong. Where's this overwhelming majority, Zan? Where are the figures? How many trans people are in your audience? And how many trans people support what Sophie has said here? Have you done the This is all horseshit. He doesn't believe a single fucking thing that he's saying. Like, he's just being condescending and treating trans people like children. He can't actually take pushback from trans people. Search. Have you done the polling? Of course you haven't, because you are the terminally online individual who simply uses queer people for content and doesn't support us in any actual, tangible way. And that's the fucking T. Check out what he says here at the end of him reading the tweets. Political boundaries are not the line by which you should judge the moral character of YouTubers and streamers in this space, or any public figure. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Xanderhal. You are so right, dude. Xanderhal even says that someone's political beliefs could be a good indication of their moral values, which is pretty funny because he supports the Democrats, unironically, and they are constant- on YouTube, I should remind people to like the stream. Please like the stream. Every single person here needs to like the stream, or they I cry Throwing marginalized time. people under the bus, just like him. So later in the video, he says this. Uh, you will find four times out of 10, I'd say, that a content creator in your lane that you've discovered who you might want to collab with, become friends with, who you might even find enjoying their content and becoming sort of a fan of in a way, already hates you before you even know their name or before you even knew they exist. It's absolutely wild that he said that with no self-reflection on why this would be. Maybe the reason that people don't want to work with you and that your reputation precedes you is because you're a fucking man-child who throws his toys out of the pram every time a woman online disagrees with you. Why would anyone want to work with someone like that? Dude, dude, mother motherfucker essay posts at people when they put, oh my God. Dude, one of the main things to take away from this 13 minute video is that he talks about why Sophie is bad for a grand total of two minutes and a couple of seconds, give or take. In those two minutes, it's mainly hyperbole and ad hominem attacks. He doesn't deep dive into any of Sophie's content or any of her tweets. He just rambles about how she's a terrible person. Xanderhal also uses a sanest term here in the beginning of his video. The word in itself is widely regarded as a word that should never be used in any context. It's the shortening of schizophrenic. 
On the point of Sainism, Xanderhal seems to really focus on the fact that anyone who disagrees with him has mental issues. Now, as an ADHD, OCD, and anxiety having boy, and big advocate for mental health awareness, what I like to try and remind people as often as I can is that pretty much everybody has mental health issues. It's kind of part and parcel of living under capitalism. So this scapegoat is kind of one that you could use for just about anybody if you do like a minute or two of digging into their content or social media posts. Also, this big thing where he implies that people with mental issues need validation from the internet, from fake internet points, is a huge sweeping statement that misses a lot of important things to remember. Namely, that not everybody with bad mental health issues is actually on the internet. This paints a pretty bad picture of people like me who suffer from learning disabilities, are neurodivergent, and or suffered from structural sanism and or ableism. The important thing to remember about this is that Sophie, a trans woman, received a relentless amount of harassment, not just from Xander Hall's community, but from debate bro communities as a whole, just for this thread. This two minutes of hyperbole and conjecture have resulted in some of the worst harassment that my friend has ever seen. And if you know about the effects that online harassment has on people, then you don't need me to tell you just how bad that was for Sophie. It actually makes me sick just how easy these nerds could turn their communities against marginalized people who disagree with them. And listen, it doesn't matter if you have disclaimers in your video or in your description saying, please don't harass them, please don't harass them, that's not what I want. Because the very nature of drama content and debate culture on the internet has already primed people to behave in that way anyway. So I want to go back to the comment section again here, just to bring this up. She works with Bad Bunny. That's all you need to know. Oh, so boy. So this community here are implying that Sophie's relation to Kira Chats, old name Bad Bunny, and another of my good friends, is another reason for steering clear of her? But what exactly has Kara done? Okay, so the Kara chat situation is a little bit different to the Sophie situation. Oh boy, here we go. How does he wiggle his way out of this one? And while I don't want to say that one form of harassment is worse than the other with this, I do want to point out that my friend Kara has had outright misogynist harassment directed towards her from huge YouTube channels such as Penguin Zo, aka Critical, the H3H3 podcast, and pretty much every single debate bro you can think of since 2020 and a little bit earlier, I think. I've been in Kira's Twitch community for a good few years now, and of course she is one of my co-hosts on Red Planet. The main issue that these huge YouTubers had with Kira is this clip that I'm sure some of you even recognize. How did my whole speech about how I need subs and to keep the stream going if you like the content, blah, 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 how that result in zero subs? There are regulars here. Five dollars a month! Now, as most oh people in Kira's God. community know, this attitude that she has is a stream persona. She's got one of the nicest, most understanding communities that I've ever been a part of on Twitch. And she really does a lot of amazing content and shines a light on issues that are woefully underrepresented in the online leftist Twitch space. For example, at the moment recently, she's been going hard on the Israeli genocide of Palestinians. But for some reason, men on Twitch.television and YouTube.com cannot stand to see a woman doing political content. Oh, shut the fuck up. This identity politics shit is so frustrating. Is he going to even bring up any of it? Is he going to bring up her... Like her racism, her homophobia, or trans, like support. any of it? No? Turn oh, he's not? He's, he's, he's not himself. because he's a dishonest piece of shit? Who thought, who would have thought about this? Who could have imagined? Just absolutely need to make a takedown video of her because she is just so bad. If Bad Bunny doesn't have a negative opinion about you, you're not doing enough for progress. Bit of a fucking telling name there, terminally online leftist. <laughs> Just implying that if she doesn't like you, you're a good person. I wouldn't go after her for being a clout chaser. All YouTubers and Twitch streamers do this to an extent. The difference is that Bad Bunny has absolutely no principles or ideology other than what her uh, clout found on tonight. Hmm, I have no idea who she is, because I really don't care about her. But this behavior reminds me of the quote-unquote inclusive Karens that love the sound of their own voices way too much at retail. I I just met one today, and she was ranting about boots not being inclusive for thick people, which I agreed, and tried to lecture me about shoe size differences for men and women. I just phased out from there. Afterwards, she left 20 pairs of shoes lying all over the floor for me to pick up and resort after she dumped her spiel. That's the kind of energy I'm getting right now. Thank you, Barbara Worst Women. Are you trying to say, like, whamans? You know, like anti-SJWs do with your name? I don't know, what's going on there? So, the comments here are positioning her as a clout-chasing woman who simply does things for money and not because she has any actual moral standpoints or Real. ideology at all. So, it's also worth mentioning that Kira, just like Xanderhal, had a bit of a chud phase. One that she's actually really open about and references regularly, even on her stream today. Which is good to see, because when people are unlearning a lot of the stuff they learn in formative years regarding politics and people's civil rights, oh they my can often God. forget that it was incredibly easy to fall down the rabbit hole of what right opinions. What a fucking worm. Something that Xander Hall should be incredibly familiar with, no? Considering... this. He also said in his last video on Sophie that Hunter Avalon, who is a former right-wing Nazi white supremacist conservative, is an example of someone whose politics were bad but is a good person. Okay, so, so, so fucking Nicole has a bit of a chud phase when she has said, I was alt-right. But no, when Hunter Avalon was the same thing 
That's like white supremacist neo-Nazi. Yeah, he's a he's a fucking worm. This entire thing is just about defending his friends. Apparently that grace is not extended to Kira Chats. Wonder why. He goes on to say that he found out that he was banned in Kira Chat's stream and then says, Now, would you guys like to guess what exactly got me banned and blocked by uh, Bad Bunny here? Now, it's not because uh, of any, um, I'm, I'm not like trans or gay or anything like that or bi, so it's not because of her bigotry. So I, I will let you guys know it is not because I am part of any marginalized groups that uh, Bad Bunny has um, a bigotry towards. <laughs> well, I see what you've done there, Xander Hall. You have made a loaded <laughs> statement. You presented our friend Kira as a bigot without actually providing any evidence that she is a bigot now and that that is a reason that she would ban you from her community now or that even when she was a bigot in any way that she would like ban you for being bisexual or trans he then talks about how she had a bit of banter with him when he went into a stream one day and she asked him what he was up to today and when he said he would be streaming later she popped off at him now it kind of sounds to me like she was having a bit of banter with him considering that a lot of streamers think that that is oh self-promo it literally sounds to me like the kind of joke that me and Kira would share if I went into her chat nowadays. But apparently this was just like lost on Xander Hall. He just like doesn't understand what like having a bit of a laugh is. So just to explain like why Kira might have made a joke about this. There is a certain sect of Twitter where streamers absolutely pop off about the fact that even saying that you are a streamer or mentioning that you might stream at all in another streamer's chat is the worst thing that you could possibly do and you deserve to be banned from the community for doing that it's absolutely ridiculous i have so much to say about streamers who just don't like self-promo but that's for another fucking time in all honesty i think that this was a bit of banter in an attempt to make friends with xander hall who she clearly had heard about previously and knew was a streamer then our man zan says that she started ignoring his messages now listen kira's chat goes at a million miles an hour compared to me anyway uh, and i find it hard to read all the messages in my oh chat my and i've only got like a half or even a third of what kira's chat and viewership has been at some points so that's that explained he then says that when he realizes that he was blocked by her on twitter he went to her stream to ask her while she was live about why he was blocked on twitter and he got banned from the Twitch chat too. After which someone told him that she tweeted that she knew that Xander Hall was a creepy debate bro weirdo. And of course, personally, I think that's an absolutely fine reason to ban anybody from your community. Now, what's really fucking frustrating here is that Xander Hall, again, does no self-reflection here and turns to the attack on Kira. Well, he'd already begun the attack at the start of the video, but he then goes hard and brings up her past alt-right opinions and even brings up some screenshots that are fairly popular amongst people who like to harass her, where she's said slurs in Discord channels. And all he really does here is just say that she's like a clout chaser and a bigot. And he also- Oh, shut the fuck up. Like if if those screenshots belong to Zan, you know that he would be going off about those screenshots and saying that Zan hasn't changed. Zan has never changed she's because it's bad bunny, heart. you know? He, he's going to do anything to protect her. He wants that clout. He wants the clout and the attention way more than he's willing to admit. Talks about how he's got like so much evidence that she's like a grifter and a bigot, but this is all stuff that she's done in the past, dude. And it's all stuff that she's apologized for and has done so much work to unlearn and try and make amends for the bad that she did to people. That nothing really stands up regarding that like you don't really have that much evidence that she is a bad person now you're just pissed off that your reputation in how your harmful bastard preceded you once again and it prevented you from networking with someone who is actually a really cool content creator and if you want to talk about how people have got evidence that someone is a grifter and a clout chasing piece of shit well i mean you're watching this video right this video in which I wrote 15,000 words about you doing exactly that. But nah, he spends like 10 minutes talking about how she had harmful opinions in the past and does nothing to talk about the fact that she's left all that behind and realized how bad it was. He just skips a bunch of so-called evidence because there's too much of it. Bro, bro, look at the length of this video. You clearly don't care about this as much as you're saying you do. Again, the point he tries to make here is that when people have had bad opinions in the past, you need to hold them to account forever. Despite his love of Hunter Avalone and other right-wingers who have denounced their alt-right past, even though the time period in which these people turned around was more recent than Kira herself. He then plays an old clip in which Kira says she would not have sex with or date a bisexual guy, which is something I, as a bisexual man, am very familiar with as an opinion. If a guy is like having sex with other guys... Oh my god. And then he's like, oh, maybe I'll try having sex with you. I'm like... Uh... <laughs> now, of course, the way that Kira says it here is problematic for many reasons, but again, we're missing the point that this is something she said in the past and wouldn't dream of saying this nowadays because she understands the harm it would cause. And as a bi guy, I just want to say for anyone listening here, if this is something that you think... 
bomb. Oh my god, he is such a piece of shit. He is such a snake. I am baffled by I'm how much bomb. of a piece of shit he's Lana being. Underscore apples got a asterisk tier three asterisk subscription. I don't want to fuck or date someone who has an opinion like this anyway, and I'm not going to lose sleep about people having opinions like this when I know that there are plenty of people who want to fuck me or date me. But if you change your mind about that and realize why you said those things were bad, then of course I'm ready and willing to forgive you. This is a very popular opinion that people have about M-Spec men. It's a common thing, and people are going to have this opinion because they've been conditioned to by the hierarchies of homophobia and the nuclear family that are imposed on us. It's not right, and it needs to change, and there's a lot of work that needs to be done to do that, but in the grand scheme of things, in terms of evidence you could use against Kira to point out that she's a hateful person, this is a reach. I also want to point out that someone in Zanahol's chat here uses the command clip chimp. And Zan's chatbot responds with an emote and a cheeky little photographer, Zan, with the word clippers. Now, in Twitch lingo, these are phrases that imply someone needs to clip this content out of context and post it to r slash livestream fails on Reddit, thus instigating harassment towards that person either on Twitter or on their Twitch channel themselves. And you better believe this is something that Kira got harassed for. Albeit, it was a drop in the ocean of the regular harassment. Oh yeah, no, no, no. He, as far as I can tell so far in the video, he has mentioned exactly one incident of Nicole's racism and not even the worst incidents because he would have to dedicate an entire hour and 30 minutes to going over every single fucked up thing and doing like the, um, the most amazing fucking mental gymnastics that she receives, but that is no excuse. Zan also, for some reason here, says that he doesn't want to come across as defending Bad Bunny, despite the fact that at the start of the video, he said this. So Bad Bunny, uh, I learned about her mostly because of the Destiny drama, and I wasn't entirely convinced by the reasons that Destiny gave for why we ought to dislike Bad Bunny. Like, it just didn't come off to me as entirely, um, like, that, like, valid for everybody to just all of a sudden decide Bad Bunny's a piece of shit and just disregard her and refuse to engage with her or anything like that or be friends with her just because destiny says she's says. mean or whatever like it just fun. didn't sit well with me Hugs if you Claire. value logic and reason hard, hard, and hard. that's a thing that debate bros love to talk about then why wouldn't you take someone's good points along with the bad such as what i'm trying to do in this video but check this out now a lot of people over the years who have had criticism of bad bunny have said more or less the exact exact same thing and i'll admit that i made a counter argument to this along with people who would defend Bad Bunny, that uh, people who have this opinion are probably just being biased by the fact that she's a woman, and that when a woman engages in this type of humor, it comes off as being bitchy or rude or as narcissistic or whatever, but when men do it, it comes off as 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 uh, suave or like, oh, what a he's kind of a douchebag, but he's funny about it, so it's okay because he's a guy. He's literally correct here, so why does he go back on it? I'll tell you why he goes back on it and calls her mean, because that is what his entire channel is all about. Drama, clout, revenge, and grift content. And I can say with 10,000% certainty that Kira is not this evil mean monster that Zan is making her out to be. I've been in hours and hours of Discord calls with her, personal calls, meetings, DMs, and she is one of the sweetest, most lovely people that you could ever meet. This is a character assassination video, and it is inexcusable. Exactly the same as the one he made about Sophie. It's also absolutely ridiculous that he rambles on about Kira just being close to people for clout as well, because he is absolutely close. That's what Nicole did to me. She got close to me for clout. She realized that she couldn't use me as the token tranny to make her look woke, and then she threw me away, because that's what she does. Just like DJ Mule, they only care about trans people if trans people can be used as props. Savor should destiny for clout too? Like, come on, man. This is all projection and we can see it a mile off. I also want to make a big point here that Kira's harassment has been so intense that she has lost a lot of her viewers on Twitch and YouTube. Despite the constant barrage of harassment that she gets doing her job on a daily- Shut up. Also, uh, Lada, thank you so much for the four tier ones. No, hourly basis. She has been steadfast in her left-wing opinions and she is always doing her best to unlearn the harmful behaviors that she had in the past. And she does all this despite the drop in clout that she is supposedly farming from having pretend opinions on the internet. I mean, come on people, you can clearly see that this is absurd and has no basis in reality. It is simply the systematic destruction of a woman on the internet simply because she chose to be outspoken and make political content. Seriously, if you're watching this and you have any empathy or sympathy for Kira's position at all, please go and show her some love. You won't regret it. She is more than worthy of your time. So there's a little rule of three that I'm trying to bring into my content here. And I'm I remember when I got swatted, when there were five swatting attempts on me after I fled the fucking continent. Was Kira Chats there? No, she wasn't because she couldn't use me for clout. She fucking abandoned me when things were at their worst. Because that's the thing. It's like, if I followed everything that she said and I like stuck in her little echo chamber instead of being an autonomous human being that is three-dimensional she would have stuck around but that's not how these people view minorities gonna try and stick to that going forward so i'm gonna finish this video with a third and final 
and perhaps one of the worst character assassinations that Xanderhol has done on his channel. And that is of his ex, Lani. Oh boy, this is a lot. Strap in, everybody. Lani, aka Pastel Leftist, was Xanderhol's partner for two and a half years, according to the twitlonger she posted about him in July of this year. She describes how one day, a few weeks before the time of the twitlonger, he dumped her via text. Extremely shitty behavior. Lani says all of this is completely untrue and has no idea where he got all this stuff from, but thinks it might be because a car was broken into one time and all that the people who stole stuff left was his debit card, which she already had permission to use to buy groceries and stuff like that. Lani also goes on to say that Xanderhol has refused to talk to him about any of this and claims that she was a master manipulator, also implying that she sold all the stuff that was stolen from a car for drugs. He demanded that she come home from work and pack all of her stuff, including her 13-year-old cat, into her Ford Focus and leave immediately, which is, of course, an absurd thing to ask someone on such short notice. She had to move out and couch surf and sleep in her car for a few weeks before she could finally go home when she realized her room had been trashed and Xanderhol had left with her cat to go and live back at his mum's house. So she moved back into their old apartment and was obviously trying to deal with this sudden shakeup in her life, her happiness, her security, when Xan the man shows up without her cat and told her he was ending the tenancy on the apartment and she needed to move out and be gone the next day. Lani unfortunately was arrested while she was trying to find somewhere to live as unfortunately she couldn't afford to pay the upkeep on the tags, which is vehicle registration for non-US viewers, on her car and one of her friends had drugs on him when the cops pulled them up and she had to spend five days in a cell. When she made a phone call, she found out that Xander Hall and his mum had completely blocked her or were ignoring her calls. And when she got out of prison and someone managed to take her home, she found out that the locks had been changed and she had no way to get into the apartment. This meant that she was homeless and had none of her belongings. So let's recap real quick. A two and a half year relationship, the guy ends it out of nowhere via text, claiming that she's doing drugs and stealing from him, literally makes her homeless. And what does he have to say for himself? First things first, gang. I just want to say that making content about your breakup is an extremely ghoulish thing to do. Bro, you're literally making content about his breakup, you grifting piece of shit. Okay, like making a tweet, going off on a Facebook post, or even an Instagram story is kind of a normal human thing to do but a 50 minute YouTube video. Not just a 50 minute YouTube video, a 50 minute YouTube video where he is trying to say that he made her homeless for a good reason and that she had tried to frame him and that he was trying to debunk some kind of conspiracy against him. This man is insufferable. One thing I've learned from my time as a leftist and doing actual activism out in the real world is- Yeah, it so does... for when, when I'm hearing, Zan wanted to keep this private, but it was Zan's ex who made this public and then it got into the drama sphere and then Zan felt the need to address it, which honestly makes sense. Like, it sucks because a lot of content creators don't get much of a private life because everyone wants to turn their private life into internet drama. That's not really on them. That's just something people like to do not matter how much of a piece of shit someone can be they deserve at the very least the basic human rights that every human being deserves food clothing housing healthcare. Xanderhal reaching so far into the depths of his cruelty to render his partner homeless is just something that is so sickening to me from so many different angles. It was genuinely hard for me to go through this video just seeing how smug and comfortable he is, all the while safe in the knowledge that he is going to be fine and his ex-partner is going through one of the worst times of her life. He starts off in this video by saying that early in the relationship when he moved in with her, they had a trad con relationship. Now, for those of you that don't know what this is, this means that this is where the man does all the money making and the woman does all the chores around the house, the cooking, the cleaning, something that's known as reproductive labor because it's normally women in society that have done this thanks to the patriarchy. This is just like a kind of gross dynamic where he has all the power to begin with. But I gotta say, if a couple consents to this and it's something that they're both happy with, then that's absolutely fine. Like if you have a trad con relationship like this and you're both safe in the knowledge that you are fine with it and you do not feel oppressed by this, cool, go for it, go for your life. Who am I to say what's right and wrong in a person's relationship? If that works for you, cool. But it does not sound like That's Xanderhal had a very good knowledge of boundaries and consent when it came to this kind of relationship. He says one of the first things that he noticed when he moved out is that he wasn't seeing as much money coming in as he thought he should be, which is like a very normal thing to happen when you first move out of your parents' gaff and go to live on your own somewhere, or even with a couple. This is called the material conditions of the working class under capitalism, Xanderhal, and I advise you to do Dude. some research on it. Of course, it's an incredible- Can you just talk like a normal person? Can is he capable of talking like a normal fucking human being? Oh my god. I'm, I'm sorry, just like- the random Marxist buzzwords that he throws in that have absolutely no, only references to theory, no actual theory. Academic jargon for the purpose of making yourself look smart. 
But it doesn't make you look smart. It makes you look detached from regular people. And that makes you an incredibly ineffective political advocate. Incredibly upsetting reality check that someone like Lani understood a lot more than Xander Hall because she has more life experience than him, being an older person than him. So of course, when she explains that to him, that makes a lot of sense as to why she'd say that. But no, of course, Xander Hall is implying here that she is covering up for something, that this is all part of the conspiracy against him. Xander Hall then says that Lani was not giving him the emotional support that he needed, but from the account that Lani gives about their relationship, it really doesn't seem like he was open in his communication about this stuff. It's actually really sad to read this, but here it is. I'll admit that since I started working outside the house, I haven't been as good of a girlfriend to Alex as I've been in the two years prior. During the two years of COVID, I was home all the time, constantly available and on call to help with anything he needed. I was mostly happy, but I told him many times about how I felt lonely a lot of the time. Alex is a lot better at talking about himself than he is at listening, and most days he would hardly come out of his room. When I started working again and I made some friends, I stopped being home as often, which made me happier but him miserable. I should have tried harder to find a healthy balance we could both feel good about, but I don't feel like I deserve to have my cat and everything I own taken from me. So it kind of sounds like they came across a very normal problem that happens in relationships that's basically down to toxic masculinity preventing men from asking for their needs directly. What is a little bit more sickening in this situation though is that he says the only reason that he moved in with Lani was to escape a living situation with his parents. My living situation with my parents eventually just got too toxic for me to continue being happy and making content and I decided that my best course of action was to move away. And so I did. I moved all the way across the country to Palm Springs, California with Lani. Which is, and I will die on this hill, a fucking terrible reason to move in with someone. It's a great reason to move out on your own, absolutely, but you should not be moving in with someone else just because of that. When you move in with someone that you love, that you're in a romantic or sexual relationship with, you do it because you love them and you care for them and you decide to face this life together, not to escape another shitty living situation, which in all honesty, doesn't actually sound like that bad of a- Is he an incel? Does he not know how the world actually is? I'm, I'm fucking baffled by this. Like, I have been in a lot of relationships that I got stuck in that I did not want to be simply because I was poor and I needed to be in a relationship in order to actually fucking eat, you know? This is something that happens to literally tens of millions of people. I'm just like kind of fucking flabbergasted that he's like, I could be doing IRL activism. I could be doing direct actions, blah, 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 material conditions. But fucking Dr. Eggman over here doesn't even seem to know how the world works or how things actually are. Of a situation because his parents took him in straight away after things went wrong with Lani. He also goes on then to say that Lani needed attention, which is like, dude, do you know what relationships are? In fact, even five minutes ago, you said that you needed attention from Lani and that she wasn't giving it to you. And apparently that's a valid thing for you to complain about, but not for her. He also does this bizarre mental backflip here saying that Lani would want attention, despite the fact that both of us were at home all day and we spent tons of time together just by virtue of that. Like, no, dude, just because you're in the same house as someone or even in the same room doesn't mean that you're doing bonding activities or paying attention to your partner. That is like the laziest relationship I've ever heard of in my entire life. And from what Lani said in a twit longer that we just read out, it kind of sounds like you were just in your room a lot of the time, just doing your own fucking thing. This next part is just absolutely batshit. Like, I really got to hand it to Xander Hall of all the things that he does wrong that I've talked about in this video. This really takes the cake. While my suspicions became ever increasing, Lonnie was offered a job cleaning Airbnbs by a friend of hers. She took it, claiming she wanted to be able to get out of the house and make some friends and help make ends meet financially. Lonnie was now spending most of her time out of the house. In some cases, she would go more than a day without responding to me, and eventually it started not coming home. When I'd questioned her about it, she'd actually respond. Her reasoning was that she was spending the night on her friend Sarah's couch because they worked together and they were carpooling to save money on gas. I didn't buy it, and the first night that she didn't come home, I started to consider the relationship over. Like, to consider the relationship over the second that your partner does something that you don't like is so, so weak, dude. Like, you utter, utter waste, man. I couldn't think of a situation that is more childish, ridiculous, and self-serving than a man not even attempting to fix his relationship when his partner is trying to make herself happy on her own. Everything he talks about next where he says that she wasn't answering his frankly ridiculous text demanding to know where she is. He mentions that Lani shuts him down, saying that he's being controlling. And like, yeah, dude, that's because you were being controlling. Demanding to know where your partner is all the time, that's extremely controlling behavior. Again, why are you not doing any self-reflection here, dude? Being completely overbearing in how you smother a partner is absolutely absurd. And you really need to consider that other people need space. Throwing all your toys out of the pram and making her homeless because you simply cannot be bothered to try and make the relationship work is, well, 
The whole man belongs in the bin. He also complains that Lani took the keys with her every time that she went out and that meant that he couldn't go out and do stuff. And it just makes me think, dude, are you an actual amoeba? Just get some more keys cut. Speak to the property manager. Like, what, what, what do you fucking want, dude? I think that in listening to all this and understanding what's happened here, I've come to the conclusion that Xanderhal made a huge... <laughs> hey, Xanderhal, bet you really want to react to my hour and a half hit piece on you and give me content for another video. Why should we bother to reply to DJ Mule? He would reply to us, and we would have to reply to his reply. There's no end to that. It will be quite enough for us to announce that DJ Mule's video is an example of the rampant ageism in the streaming community and everyone. Oh, it's it's doing the fucking the fake Lennon quote bit. That's actually really smart huge mistake that a lot of people do when they look for a relationship and that is that he wasn't looking for a partner he was looking for a mother this kind of makes sense when Xanderhal talks about the stresses that he had living with his mum I can actually relate to it a lot and I did used to exhibit a lot of the same harmful behaviors that he did in like overbearing needing to know where your partner is all the time thinking that they're like lying and cheating on you and stuff like that but my dude that is a trauma response yeah no it's it's really weird calling it abusive or controlling to simply just ask where your partner is if they've been gone for days you're allowed to wonder where your partner is. Like, if, if it's at the point where you're giving them a fucking curfew and, like, demanding they come home at certain times and you, like, control where they're allowed to go, that's abuse. But being concerned about your partner is not abuse. That's, that's normal. That's something that should be normal. And to be fair to myself, I never fucking made anyone homeless. I never made a fucking 50-minute rant video on why doing that was a good thing to do. And this next bit just... Ew. She would constantly use my card to order Grubhub and Uber Eats to places she was cleaning for lunch instead of packing some of the fresh food that she had bought that was in our fridge and going bad. She would also constantly leave half-eaten food just sitting on the counter to go bad. She wouldn't even bother just throwing it in the fridge to let it be good for later. I can't stand people who call themselves leftists and do not understand that people do not want to do reproductive labor. Like cooking is a whole ass thing, dude. Lots of people get Uber Eats. I'm going to be getting an Uber Eats after I've recorded this video because I've got no energy to cook. And bear oh in mind, God, Lani, again, so as he admits, was the entire trad wife ideal. So she- that's, that's literally, dude, this guy, he's like projecting what he wants onto Zan. Like if you leave food out on the counter and it goes bad because you left it out on the counter, yeah, that's on you. But it seems like he's just like this massive fucking, uh, he's this, he's this massive fucking sub. He really wants Bad Bunny to like, make him live in a cage where he's only going to come out to like clean her apartment and get pissed on that's the vibe that i'm getting from him she was doing all the reproductive labor she was going out doing a job and she was trying to socialize he complains that all the food in the fridge would go bad and i'm not being funny man but like sandahol have you never been in control of a fridge in your entire life it happens all the time because unfortunately capitalism doesn't allow us a lot of time to actually address things like that plus if you've got adhd like me planning and cooking is such a drama when i'm hearing this i can't help but go back to this clip that i played you earlier and, and lani says Go to the bathroom why can't you ever throw up in the toilet like this is a thing that happens regularly and this poor woman has to deal with this literal baby man popping whiteys on stream because he smoked too much weed and he just can't make it to the bathroom so xanderhal is then talking about how he blocked off all of his paypal accounts all the access he knew that lani had to his money and then goes on to show a bunch of cash app transactions made to her account but hang on a minute if he just like on a whim decided to like stop her from getting money which was her only access to money by the way especially considering that he thinks that she was lying about the job that she had and of course remember chat her having access to his money was an agreement that they previously had in the relationship wait, whether it was unspoken wait, or not keep in mind so wait she's also a decade older than him wait 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 real wow i didn't know much about xander hall i didn't know that like his life used to be one of those like milf animes what did Xanderhal expect Lani to do when he stopped wait, her from lied? having any access to money Wait, lied? Wait, 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 no, wait, wait, there was no chance for Lani to plead her case. No chance for her to talk it out with him. No, Xanderhal exacted the same state violence that any sheriff or landlord would do on someone who has not been paying their bills on time. It appears that the same day he did all this and stopped her from having access okay, to- Okay, this is fucking gross and weird. He was also the age imbalance, like 28 to 19. I don't care if, if Lani is a guy or a girl. That, that's always fucking weird to me.
same day that he kicked her out of the apartment. He didn't confront her with the information that he now had, nor did he give her any kind of grace period to find somewhere else to live. He just acted like the most disgusting, entitled, wannabe land baron that you could possibly conceive. Also, this part in the video where he scrolls through the transactions of varying amounts that absolutely can be explained away mostly by the fact that, as he admits earlier in the video, he was the sole breadwinner and gave her free reign of his debit card with this absurd epic music like he's just solved the mystery of the century as well. It's gross. There's no other way to put it. It's sick. He's a sick misogynist that treats women like shit on and offline. Now, I just want to stress that while this is a really difficult part of the video to go through, I did want to add a little bit of comic relief in here for people because what kind of a content creator would I be without anything like that? So um, here you go. I didn't hear from him at all except when he would text me to complain about how awful his mum's house is and how she won't let him go anywhere and how he's miserable because she won't get him any vapes or weed cartridges. He would only text her about that shit. He is an actual win it. And to be honest, that is on brand considering a lot of the stuff that we've already gone through. Anyway, let's dive back into this cesspit. When Zan talks about Emily, the friend that Lani had who fell out with her and apparently exposed her gambling and meth problem, I'm skeptical at best. This is a man who's shown his ass regarding how he makes things up about women who he doesn't like so often that you'd have to forgive me that I'm doubtful, even in the existence of this person. But let's do a debate brew classic and play devil's advocate. I'm sure all of them are here, um, one hour and seven minutes into the video. Yep, they're all gonna love this shit. Let's say that this Emily person does exist and that Zan Hall's right about how Lani stole money off him and that she's got a gambling problem and she's addicted to meth. So? You see, what these leftists in Zander Hall's community who have, for example, demanded Lani do drug tests, harassed her, accused her of grooming him, even though the power balance is in Zander Hall's favor in every single instance of the relationship, and made her online life a living hell after this video is publishing don't understand, and again, this is the fault of Zander Hall and other debate nerds, is the punitive justice, especially financial violence, aka making someone homeless, is not justice. You don't just become a cop when someone has issues like that. You know better than any fucking cop in the police forces of America or the justice system. Holy fucking shit, touch grass, the lot of yep, you. I they both got evicted. They both got evicted. It's This is just like so fucking weird. Like, yeah, she was stealing his money uh, too. They, oh my God. Everything about the situation's fucked and he's just a piece of shit for even bringing this up. Swear to God. Apparently this Emily also accuses Lani of getting her ex-boyfriend evicted by not paying the rent on time. This man calls himself a leftist. A leftist. As someone in a tenants union, I cannot stress enough. The only people who evict anybody in this world are either landlords and slash or the cops. The idea that this man thinks that it's a tenant's fault when they get evicted fucking boils my blood. How the hell can you call yourself any kind of leftist when you've got an opinion like that? I'd love to hear what Bernie, who apparently Zan really hoped would win in the DNC nominations, would have to say about that. Also, Zan then going on to say that when Lani said she got evicted because her ex was hitting her and abusing her and they were being so loud and they had fights that they got too many noise complaints, he of course says, well, this video should really just be renamed, um, I created a Kiwi Farms thread for Xander Hall. Because that's basically all that this guy's doing right now. Well, uh, Emily said she made it up, so obviously she did. You fucking piece of shit. He goes on a lengthy diatribe now about credit scores and his hopes and dreams of being able to move to Seattle. And honestly, I just kind of fucking tuned out at this point. It was like 3 a.m. when I was doing this bit in the script. And after everything that he has done to his ex, I honestly do not care, dude. Like, this guy is so focused on, like, not getting an eviction because it would harm his credit score. I'm just like, bro, you made someone homeless. You made someone homeless and removed access to their money so that they got arrested because they couldn't afford the upkeep on their registration and now they have a criminal record. What the fuck do you think that does to someone's credit score? What do you think that that does to someone's life? Anyway, next, Xander Hall just like admits that Lani told him that she has nowhere to go and he's just like, I don't care. And then he says this. She needed to move her stuff out. I don't wish homelessness on anyone, but it just had to happen. Had to happen. Had to happen. Had to happen. What, all for your fucking credit score, Zan? All because you didn't have the guts to sort out your relationship? Weak, dude. Fucking weak. One of the weirdest things to me that doesn't really add up is that Xander Hall claims that there were eviction notices served to the property that apparently Lani had hid. Like, what would that have achieved? And also, why would she not have mentioned in a twit longer that she would have been worried about getting evicted from the apartment by landlords? When it came down to it, she was evicted eventually anyway. Now, in a twit longer, she claims that Alex and his mom changed the locks of the apartment so that she couldn't get in when she got out of jail. But honestly, knowing landlords as well as I know them now with the work I've done for the tenants union, it's possible that a landlord would have just done that. Possibly because Xander Hall ended the tenancy and kind of like forced all of her stuff to get locked up. But anyway, it's by the by. And to be honest, I guess it's possible, but I don't know why she'd lie about this. And she doesn't exactly try and vilify Xander Hall in this twit longer. In fact, at the end of it, she actually pleads with him to get in contact with her to sort all this mess out. She even says at one point, to be clear, I'm not saying all or even most of this is Alex's fault. He isn't required to help me, but it feels like he is trying to make the hole I'm in impossible to dig my way out of. Also, what's he playing at when he shows this Instagram exchange? Does he think this makes him look like a good person? Of course, his fans don't care. They're going to support him anyway, but damn, anyone- This is just 
really weird. Like this started off about why Xander Hall is not a good leftist. And now it's just drama farming. It really just shines a light on how he never cared about literally anything else. Outside looking in is going to see this and be like, yikes. Xander Hall shares some more DMs with people who are like legit concerned about Lonnie's whereabouts. He underlines this one where a third party who would be unbiased says that she was smoking DMT in the car with someone. Xan underlines this and writes doubt here, implying that he thinks that she was smoking meth. Again, let me point this out to everybody. If somebody is addicted to meth, especially if it's someone that you love, that still doesn't make everything that he's doing to her okay. He correctly points out in the video that meth and DMT. Does he have a lot of experience dealing with addicts in their family? Because that's kind of shocking to me. Like sometimes you need to have space from addicts in your family because they, they fucking will like steal, they will steal, like this happened to my family. Like my aunt, like she, she would like fucking steal uh, from my parents all the time. Stealing like possessions, pawning shit. Like they had to eventually draw a line because it's like, unless you can, they would be willing, more than willing to show support for getting help, but you need to make that step yourself need a pipe to be smoked in a crack pipe in particular and yeah that's correct but if you've ever actually been outside in your actual life you would know that someone on crystal meth behaves extremely differently to someone who is on dmt so i actually entirely believe that she was smoking dmt and not meth to be honest not that it matters right also clearly in reference to alex telling her he's spoken to friends who've been worried about her whereabouts she says in this screenshot i spoke to blank and they said you never spoke to them i'm confused which is clearly at the very least an indicator that xander hall is not telling the full truth with these screenshots xander hall then admits that he was considering going back to the apartment with the police a leftist who's done content covering police brutality. He was gonna bring the cops to his ex-girlfriend's place, probably telling them that she'd stolen from him, is addicted to crystal meth, and might be fucking crazy and unhinged. This motherfucker could have got her killed. Also in this next bit, Xanderhal just straight up accuses Lani of setting up a credit card in his name, which is extremely fucking hard to do when you don't have a fixed address. Like, where is she picking up this credit card from, dude? Is she picking this up from, like, the car park where she's sleeping in her car? One of the first things that he says in this video is that he noticed that money was getting drained out of his PayPal account to an unknown source, and that he didn't believe Lani when she said that he might have got hacked. But I've had my PayPal hacked before. A literal Russian child hacked my fucking PayPal in 2014 because I didn't know what I was doing. The little shit used it to pay for gaming subscriptions. It was extremely funny. And in fact, when I contacted PayPal, they sorted it all out out immediately it was pretty fucking good to be honest but what i'm trying to point out with this anecdote is that actually it's entirely possible that someone could have stolen xander hall's identity and taken out a credit card in his name not just lani next is more unfounded accusations that she was done by the cops for meth and i gotta say wait here's all the money she stole in the police report that she was definitely done for methamphetamine for being in possession. Look at these police reports. It doesn't say in the police report that she was definitely done for methamphetamine. Now, look at these police reports. It doesn't say anywhere here that she was done for meth. It says that she was done for being in possession of a controlled substance. You do know what a controlled substance is, don't you, Xanderhal? Many, 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 many things. But no, Xan the man needs you to think that it is meth. You know, the bad drug that all the crazy, unhinged druggies do. All the crazy, unhinged druggies that steal things and hurt people and rob people and rape people. Just so they can get their fix. And making out that Lani is a person like that would fit his narrative. Pretty convenient. Oh, oh, sorry. Controlled substance. Okay, yeah. Um, so let's see. Eleven, three seventy-seven. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my fucking god! Yeah. No fucking. Way. Literally, it's meth. 11377 is, is meth. DJ Mule's just fucking lying. Sharing someone's police report, even though it is public information, as he rightly points out in the video, it's just a weird fucking thing to do. It's like being like, here, here is the official thing that says that my ex is a bad person. Anyway, he says that in the police report that she was definitely done for methamphetamine. Now, look at these police reports. It doesn't say anywhere here that she was done for meth. It says that she was done for being in possession of a controlled substance. You do know what a controlled substance is, don't you, Xanderhal? Many, 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 many things. But no, Xan the man needs you to think that it is meth. You know, the bad drug that all the crazy, God. unhinged druggies do. All the crazy, unhinged hinge druggies that steal things and hurt people and rob people and rape people just so they could get their fix and making out that Lani is a person like that would fit his narrative pretty conveniently wouldn't you say Xanderhal then tells us that he went back to the apartment while she was in jail and is delighted to tell us that it looked like the aftermath of a frat house party I'm pretty fucking sure that Xanderhal didn't go to college so I don't know how he knows what an actual frat house party is but anyway that's by the by and oh my wait 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 did the did the i'm i'm a real leftist i'm a real activist actually shame someone because they didn't go to college what a fucking piece of shit
Now, this, this is not someone who's actually a leftist. This is like a smug grad school piece of shit who thinks because they read some like incredibly esoteric tomes in grad school and can talk in academic jargon that the majority of people do not understand they're somehow better than other people. To be honest, if I'd have gone through the shit that Lani had gone through, I would not have an incentive to clean up the house. I would be fucking devastated. I'd probably spend a lot of time just like in bed. Hell, I find it hard enough to clean my house in general with fucking ADHD. And trust me, having ADHD and OCD is a fucking trip. So next he says that he found like some beakers and jars that were in shrink wrap kind of implying that he thinks that she was going to be synthesizing drugs in the apartment but probably what was more likely is that she was going to use it for like etsy store stuff that i think she was doing on the side because it kind of looks like she was doing that stuff anyway according to this twitter post but honestly at this point it really does sound like he's trying to larp his own breaking bad made up fantasy he even references the show when he's talking about this and what i want to point out by the way is that xander hall and his community seem like obsessed with evidence even if it is like questionable at best so why do we not have a picture xander hall where are the pictures of this supposed meth lab that lani was making in your fucking ex apartment like if this happened to me and i went to an old apartment and found some stuff that i didn't recognize in there and i was worried that it was like weird i would probably take a picture of it so i could ask people and be like yo uh what the fuck is this <laughs> He then next talks about how he starts removing all of his possessions, clearly trying to make a statement here that even though they had the agreement that Lani was able to spend his money on the things that she needed, that now all of these things are his, actually. Oh no, oh, you thought that actually I was being nice and these things belong to you. No, they're mine. They're fucking mine. And the way he then talks about how he just went back to his normal life, pretending that none of this stuff happened, is just so disgusting. Where is his empathy? My God, no debrief, no makeup sex, just sweep it all under the carpet, don't even think about your poor, homeless ex-girlfriend who has no fucking money, has gone to jail, and whose life is falling apart. Just go and fucking make your YouTube videos. Complete refusal to take responsibility of his actions. He tries to cover his tracks here by saying that if she that really wanted to, Lani could get in touch with my mom. But even if that's the case, it is so irresponsible to cut off all communication with someone that you had been seeing for two years to not even allow her to make her case honestly gang i can't get over this like i've had toxic relationships that were six months long where someone had been confirmed by multiple people to have been cheating on me and i still didn't act like this i still tried to sort things that's because you're a cuck out with this person i gave them way more grace than this fucking man could even conceive this next bit i'm just gonna let him speak for himself really i have no intent to keep on paying to keep her items in storage it's burning a hole in my pocket for me to even hold on to these things i only saved them out of the kindness of my heart to try and be a good person and it's only gotten me tangled up in more drama i literally have less bullshit to deal with had i let her sentimental irreplaceable items get trashed in the unit along with the rest of her stuff no comment lots of notes by the way but no comment I don't really think I need to cover any more of this video than what I've already mentioned, so I'll just leave you with this part. Zan references the twit longer nice. that Lani made and says that he's proud of his fans for already being skeptical before he'd had the chance to make this video. With that in mind, it's time to wrap this up. The long and short of this stuff is that Xander Hall has fostered a community of liberal toxic masculinity. No one here is listening to the victim. No, no one at all actually even understands that Lani is a victim. Nor do they understand that Sophie or Kara or the woke scolds that he talked about are also victims. They actually believe that Xander Hall is the victim in all of these situations, despite him having all the power in the situation with Lani and his fans being predispositioned to support him in the case of Sophie, oh Kara, God. and the quote unquote woke scolds. In the situation with Lani, he is His conclusion is literally, all of my friends are victims and all of these people I don't like aren't victims. Additionally, toxically masculine, head of the household manly man. His community clearly have a sheer lack of understanding of material conditions, human rights, drug use, state violence, and financial violence. Not to mention homelessness, which is a clear indication that he doesn't educate his community on those things. And the fact that he called his video on his breakup, debunking the allegations against me, sort of implies that there's a conspiracy against him. This is a narrative that he falls back on a lot in his attack hit pieces on people like Sophie and Kira. I imagine he thinks this conspiracy exists because of all the other people on the online left who dislike him for fairly credible reasons. All the things I've mentioned in this video, Plus a lot of other stuff that I simply can't mention because otherwise this video would be hours long. There are so many other people that I've not mentioned that Xander Hall has hurt with his ridiculous character assassinations and the harassment of his fans. I think we've covered a lot of facts in this video that point to our man Xan not having really recovered from his alt-right days. His misogyny is still there and he needs to do a lot of work to unlearn his harmful behaviors. Plus his aggression towards trans people who disagree with him and his debate bro pals while simultaneously sticking up for those who do what he says is clearly an example of his queer phobia not being properly dealt with either. His lack of good grace and faith in attacking Kira shows that he actually doesn't believe his own mantra that you can debate Nazis in the marketplace of ideas and convert them because apparently someone having said bad stuff in the past is absolutely inexcusable if it's a woman that he doesn't like. 
When Xan attacks people he doesn't like, there's a whole lot of projection going on. He calls Kira a terrible person who doesn't deserve redemption from her days as an alt writer. He says that Sophie might have some good political opinions, but she's a terrible person. He calls Lani a master manipulator and implies that she was a terrible partner. He says the woke skulls oh are mentally ill people who need validation from the internet because they never go outside. These are all things that could be applied to Xander Hall himself. All this coupled with a refusal to self-reflect simply means that he's a narrow-minded man who's stuck in his own bizarre world of failed Minecraft YouTuber dreams and mummy issues. And it's sad. Lots of people like Xander Hall because, like his debate bro friends, they offer a window into politics where you don't actually have to do anything. Except for what the system says you can already do, and this makes them feel like they're making a difference in a world that they correctly know is bad. He reinforces the belief that you can change the system from within the system. And people love that. Because people with privilege and comfort don't want to do anything other than what they already do. They don't want to change their mind too much. They enjoy the cruelty and puritanical cult-like behavior that's encouraged in white Western colonial society. He reinforces their prejudice and basically makes them feel like they're doing an activism. Whereas really, they just have posting disease, thinking that you can change the world with minimal online activity. It's arguable that Xander Hall does nothing for progress despite his progressive opinions about race, gender, and sexuality. Oh the dogpiling God, he encourages dude. on marginalized people pretty much cancels out the perceived good work that he does. But there's a reason for all this being the focus of the content. We already know he was struggling for money living out with Lani, and of course he knows that having centrist drama-based content is a lot more lucrative because, well, simply put, people are ghouls and they love that shit. The debate scene is something that reinforces this observation because people like Destiny and Vosh rake in sizable incomes for having paper-thin positions and wildly fluctuating moral compasses, which reinforce the biases of their mostly centrist neoliberal view and people love the drama, the blood sport of the debate community. And ultimately, it doesn't get us anywhere. As mentioned earlier, there is no actual evidence that says that debate Holy stops people from having bigoted opinions, nor does it stop them from hiding them. No, lots of people let those opinions out when somebody upsets them, as we've seen with our Zanny man. My friends Sophie and Kira have spoke to me in private about the harassment that they've gotten from Xander Hall's community, and it is fucking heartbreaking. These are not people that need any more shit in their lives, Xander Hall. These are phenomenal people and allies who would have supported you and fought for you if you'd only just done a little bit of work to unlearn those harmful behaviors. Take Holy shit, dude. So his conclusion on this is debates are bad because people don't change. That was actually his conclusion. Like, what is with all of these fake leftists who have like an, this incredibly, incredibly fucking conservative position that people aren't just intrinsically the way they are, that no one can change. Like, you are the reason why people don't get de-radicalized. You're the reason why there are so many Nazis in the world if you don't believe that people can change and you don't give people room to grow unless it's like someone you think is a friend. It's so fucking infuriating dealing with these kinds of people. Take some criticism on the chin and apologize. It's that shitty debate bro mentality you've got of never conceding and never showing weakness. It doesn't help anybody, including you. I actually started making content criticizing the debate circuit because of the tweet that Sophie made that you unceremoniously blasted and sent your community after her for. I already knew that debate bros were a farce in terms of their progression for the left, but that harassment and hate that you sent my friend's way radicalized me against the debate bro circuit in its entirety. I don't want to be doing hour plus long videos about nerds who just need to fucking log off for a month and read some theory. I want to be doing- Then don't! You never had to make this video! content about how we can literally change the world and all the awesome activism that people are doing right now. I want to restore people's faith in humanity, but you and your mates are clogging up the online political space and hurting people, and it's gotta fucking stop. You even said yourself how disappointed you are that the majority of people end up disliking you before you've even got a chance to get to know them. Ugh, who am I kidding? He's not even fucking watching the video, is he? He won't even watch this shit the entire way through. All in all, when Xanahol talks about why he started streaming, his political journey, and what happened to him during that journey, plus his hopes and dreams, I find myself relating to him a lot. Like, we started streaming for the same reasons. He wanted to be a gaming streamer, so did I. He got into politics because he realized there was something up with the world, so did I. He enjoys what he does in the politics scene. So do I. So how did Zan get so close but so far from being super based? I'm literally 10 years older than Xander Hall, but I've got a lot of faith in Zoomers. They seem to be really well politically aligned. Far more so than Millennials. But with Xander Hall, I just feel this huge disappointment. This video isn't an attempt at cancellation because hell, as we all know, that oh doesn't God. work. This is just to point out to everyone, including Xander Hall, that the debate oh circuit God. and debate culture as a whole has got some extremely harmful behaviors that need to stop. If you've been on the fence about Xander Hall, or even if you've been watching this whole thing, foaming at the mouth, raiding that I dare criticize him, all I want is for you to consider what I've said. It doesn't matter in the long run if you change your minds, because I know that people are eventually going to move away from debate bro content. The world is changing in vast phenomenal ways, and we're on the precipice of something amazing. And most people will forget all this drama content. They'll forget all the debate bros, all the drama channels, and communities will thrive and support each other under the worsening material conditions of global capitalism. There's so much more that you can use your online influence for. You talk like a fucking Trotskyist newspaper, bro. Shut the fuck up none of those words mean anything it's literally just like fucking ml npc speech that they have been regurgitating since the fucking 70s 
People are doing amazing things all across the world. And you could be covering that and giving hope to people. All I've seen in Xanderhal's comments over the last- Like, I can, I can do this too. My biggest problem with DJ Mule is that he doesn't have a very dialectical outlook on things. He ignores the material conditions and he doesn't understand the- the, that the primary contradiction of the global proletariat is the struggle between the proletariat and international imp imperialist forces, not the struggle. Uh, you know, you could just keep going. You, if you know the, if you know like all the terms, you can ad lib ML shit all day. Researching for this video is people complaining that the left is fracturing and nothing will get done while the left is always fighting like this. And well. That's just not true. Despite all this terminally online bullshit, people are making headway. People are waking up to the fact that their governments don't care about them. People are taking matters into their own hands and looking after each other. Xanderhal's audience and the entire debate bro audience are caught in a spiral of doomerism. But it could all change overnight. Just think about it. Seriously. You're gonna make a video about me now? I don't care. Oh my god. Okay. We're fucking... Okay. All right, um, whoever gave me uh, the, the, the $10 in YouTube chat, thank you. I'm sorry. I, I wanted to make sure I got through this bullshit. I'm just like, I fucking hate this man. I hate him so much. I hate this bald bitch. He's the worst. He's so annoying. If he makes a video about me, the, the floodgates will open. I know. I, I don't care anymore. I've tried to be nice to a lot of people who didn't deserve it, and I don't care anymore. What's the like dislike ratio? 1.2k likes to 7.4k dislikes on that video. I love I love this guy. He's just like he's too much of a pussy to actually have any of these discussions because he knows that there's going to be pushback, right? So he does his hour and 29 minute long. I don't like drama content, but here's all the drama content. How did he put that out? How did he work on that and put it out like, "Yes, this is good. This is a good video." Wow, these debate nerds really fucking love this video. According to my analytics, more than 50% of all of my views on this video are from people who came here, watched less than 30 seconds of the video to leave a comment and just left, proving that these idiots are just listening to their cult leader's bad faith criticisms, not actually engaging with the content and leaving. Hmm, it's almost like I say what I say in the video. These people are so deep in the sauce of following what their extremely online figureheads believe that they simply can't help themselves from coming to this video driving up engagement. Honestly, debate nerds, thanks for getting me almost this kicks up. So I'm gonna to pin this uh, since there's so many people proving my exact points in the video blah, 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 blah. Th that being said i will address some criticisms that people have mentioned because a they are blatantly long wall and b i think it's fair to people who have no idea what's going on in the comment section or why have so many dislikes and negative comments on the videos for the he just essay posts at you he literally can't stop essay posting at you i have a new rule if you open up your uh youtube comment on a widescreen monitor and it is longer than your dick, you need to log off immediately. Like, I just think it's just, it's too much. Hi, thank you so much for watching. If you want to participate in the chat and the videos while they're live, you can do so by making an account at keffels.gg. Also, my videos on this channel regularly get demonetized, so if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so at patreon.com keffels, and I appreciate all of your ongoing support. I'll see you on the next video.